This conference will now be recorded. So, uh, welcome everybody on this webinar that is part of the Ukrainian system public consultation. I just uh, remind you that this webinar will be recorded. So, at the end, if you uh, want to um, to make questions, uh, please, if you want to maintain your anonymity, don't say your name of your of the company. Uh, you are um, actually representing, and that's it. So we can now start the the, the my presentation is not working. Sorry, I'm having technical problems. <laughs> Okay, so um, what we here is a small uh, overview of what we are going to talk about uh, today. Uh, I will do a small introduction about what PFC is. Then there will be the presentation of the National Vol Voluntary Forest Certification System done by Maria. And then there will be some time for questions and answers where all the participants can make, uh, of course, questions. So, <clears throat> what is PFC? PFC is an alliance of independent national forest certification systems under the umbrella of PFC International. And PFC stands for Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification Systems. PFC is an umbrella organization where the members are meeting the PFC sustainability benchmark, setting the requirements for national systems. And it is a voluntary mechanism uh, worldwide, overall, uh, promoting sustainable forest management through third party certification. This means that the certificates are issued by independent certifications body. PSC is the world's largest forest certification system by size and in fact is a provider of two-thirds of the world certified sustainable management food. Here we have a, an overview of uh, where uh, PFC is present right now. 20 years ago it started just as a European organization. Now we can see that it's present worldwide in all the continents actually. And right now we have 53 members, 320 million hectares certified, and 20,000 certified companies. And now, a small introduction about what we are going to uh, to listen to today. So, the National Voluntary Forest Certification System joined PFC the 30th November uh, 2019, and in 2020, they submitted the application for assessment and endorsement of their system. The PFC assessment is carried out by an independent assessor that is not been, uh, has not been appointed yet. The call for proposal will end at the end of this month, so we will have the assessor appointed um, in October. And part of the assessment is a 60 days public consultations uh, that you can find on the PFC uh, website. And uh, here you can leave your comments on the system. There is the full documentation available and you can leave the comments. The comments are really important and the deadline is uh, to submit your comments is the 27 October for this system. And it's really important because all the comments submitted to PFC International in the public consultation will be considered by the assessor in the assessment report. So if you wish, it's really important to make your comment in the public consultation. So go to our website and uh, give your feedback. So after this really small introduction, I give the word to Maria uh, to present to the Ukrainian system. So please, Maria, if you want to share your screen. Hello, everyone. I want just one minute, I will share my screen. 
and we'll start my presentation, which I prepared for today. So my name is Maria Maha. I am head of Association National Voluntary Forest Certification System. It's a national member of PFSC International. And today we have the following agenda. It's uh, introduction of Ukraine and uh, our system, summary of the standard setting process, and uh, national voluntary forest certification system documentation and in the end as Ivaria already told you can ask me questions and i would be happy to answer them Uh, hello, one more time. Sorry, I had a technical problem. Uh, Ivaria, could you please allow me to share my screen because I cannot right now. Uh, can you see my, my presentation now? Ivaria? Can you see my screen? Sorry. Can anybody see my screen? Yeah, we yeah. see you. Okay, sorry, sorry. And now, and presentation, is everything okay? Do you see the agenda? Yes, it is clear. Yes, sorry, it was technical problems, but it happened sometime. It's a new reality, online meetings. So uh, as I already told, my name is Maria Maha. I am head of Association National Voluntary Forest Certification System. And today I will present some facts about Ukraine, about our association and about the system and standards which we were created and which we hope would be endorsed by PFSC International. Some facts about uh, Ukrainian forest rye. Ukraine is uh, one of the biggest countries in Europe. We have 600,000 square meters but uh, forest area is 10 and 4 million hectares which may 16 percent of our territory as you can see on the map the most of the forests are situated in the north and on the west of ukraine in carpathian mountains 73 percent of ukrainian forests are state owned and managed by state agency of forest resources of ukraine so the most forests are managed by the government in Ukraine. The main species which we have is pine, oak, beech, and spruce. 
Wood is one of the largest export industry and it makes 4% of our GDP. Also, what we are proud for is that 70% of uh, UNESCO heritage object ancient primal beach forest of the Carpathians is located in Ukraine. How it all began and why we decided to implement PFSC to Ukraine. On uh, March 2019, it was conventions of foresters in Ukraine. And after this meeting, the Society of Foresters of Ukraine has decided to implement PFSC. They received a support from Ukrainian Barbecue Association and from some private uh, companies. And why we need this? Why we need PFSC to Ukraine? The main uh, opportunity for Ukraine is transformation from a source raw material into a supplier of finished products. We hope that today, when the market is requiring sustainable and traceable product, the PFC would help us to increase the demand for the Ukrainian final product. Also, we need a national standard to harmonize previous legislation and international requirements. And national standards should harmonize it and have the only one to sustainable forest management. And we hope that PFSC reputation and PFSC cooperation with stakeholders would help us to increase trust level to forest workers in Ukraine. Important dates for our association. Decision was made in April 2019. Association was created in 2019. In November 2019, as Iwari already told, we uh, became a 53rd national member of PFSC family. On January 2020, we had a first meeting of the working group on standards, on forest management standard development. And in June 2020, we submit our application for PFSC endorsement. I would like to introduce our team who was worked for this implementation. It's uh, head of Society of Foresters of Ukraine, Yuri Marchuk. He has 51 year experience in forest industry, head of all Ukrainian NGOs, the Society of Foresters of Ukraine, academician of the Forestry Academy of Science of Ukraine, winner of a number of state and public awards. Also, we have Ala Oborska. She is Associate Professor of the Department of Forest Taxation and Forest Management of the National University of Life and Environmental Science of Ukraine. Over 20 years of practical experience in forestry at state and communal forestry enterprises. She has a great expertise in legality and law enforcement in forestry and national and local levels expert of anti-flag second program on research of local community rights and also she has seven years of experience in active consulting in the sphere of forest management and chain of custody certification. Young but very purposeful and persistent, Andri Shavarin, she has a master in law he, he make us a great lawyer and technical support and also he is making the doctrine in law. It's our team and of course me, as you can see. Then uh, the basis of our system. What is the basis? The main four points. It's a ISO standards, a policeable law of Ukraine, ILO conventions, and of course the main, main basis is the PFSC international standards. During this uh, process of establishment and future functioning of the system, it's very important to communicate with stakeholders. For that aim, we have the following channels. We have the official website, woodcertification.com.ua, where everybody can see, can saw all the stages of the standard setting project and can see our future activities. Also, we have a Facebook page, PFC Ukraine which became quite popular 
Also, we have sent emails to every stakeholder to inform about our process, uh, to ask them to give the comments and to participate. Also, we published in some newspapers. We have a publication of website of Society of Foresters of Ukraine. And on YouTube channel, every stakeholder can see the video from our working group on development of forest management standards. Standard setting process. The main, uh, one of the uh, most important is the working group. We had uh, the following stakeholders group in our working group. According to PFSC International, it has to be uh, obligatory to have six groups, including indigenous people. In Ukraine, we didn't have indigenous people because according to United Nations list, we don't have these people. So we have the following groups. We have forest management, business and industry, NGOs, scientific and technological communities, um, women and uh, children, and uh, workers' unions. So about forest management, as I already told, 70, almost 75% are managed by state agency of forest resources of Ukraine. So of course, we had a representative of this in our group, Alexander Rebak. Also, the biggest, the second biggest group of um, its communal forest, it has 13% in Ukraine. And we had Lubo Korczynska as a representative from there. Business and industry, we are proud that the two biggest uh, wood processing associations join our group. It's Yuri Medvedev, head of Mabel Dero Association, and Mikola Kovut, head of Association of Woodworkers and Loggers in Lviv region. NGOs, uh, as uh, Yuri Marchuk is the head of the biggest um, non governmental organization of foresters, he became a head of working group. He was elected by working group as the head of this working group on development of the standards. And also we have a famous uh, um, ecological uh, fighter for forests in Ukraine, Pietro Tiesto, from NGOs. Scientific and technological community. Standardization body in uh, Ukraine is Technical Committee 18 for forest resources. And uh, we are proud that the head of this technical committee joined our group for the forest management standard, Natalia Buiski. And Ihor Lesur, lead, leading research fellow of environmental, economics, and sustainable development of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. Workers and trade unions, here we also had two representatives from the Central Committee of the Trade Union and from the regional representative of trade union. And women and children, we have Valentina Mishkova, head of the Forest Service Laboratory of the Ukrainian Research Institute of Forestry and Forest Mineralization. And as the children is our future, we had Yulia Tsukanova, head of Young Foresters Club and a teacher of biology. To make the uh, work of the working group on, on development, uh, forest management standards more efficient. We have invited three experts to write a draft, which uh, first were discussed in the working group. These experts um, are all have PhD and uh, they have a, a great experience in a certification and in auditing. It was Georgi Bondaruk, Vladimir Kovalishin, and Sergei Rozvod. Stakeholder engagement during the standard setting process. 142 comments we received during the uh, public consultation. Here on this slide, you can see some statistics. Um, we have received the comments from NGOs, from research institutes, from certification bodies, from forest enterprises, and also from private uh, persons. Some of them was accepted fully, some of them was partially accepted and noted, and some of them was rejected with ju 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 justification, but uh, every stakeholder has received a feedback 
um, and explanation why the comment was accepted or not accepted or partially accepted. So we hope we did this right. And uh, to summarize our, uh, our standard setting process, so we have started on 12th of November. We, uh, during 16th of December, we make stakeholder mapping. On 16th of December, we made a public announcement and stakeholder invitation. From 16th of December to 15th of January, we, uh, we invited all stakeholders to join working group and we had established working group. On 55th of February, after several meetings of the working group, we already had a first draft of our standard. And uh, from February till April, we have first public consultation. Then uh, from April till June, we have second public consultation and also pilot testing. And already on 19th of June, we uh, had consensus with all um, participants of working group and the standards were ready. Um, it's about it was about the standard setting process and in the end the last uh, uh, agenda for today it's our actually our system what we have in our system we have adopted standards from pfsc we have fully adopted free standards pfsc um, standards for trademark rules requirements chain of custody and also requirements for certification bodies who do certification against um, a chain of custody also we have standards which we have developed and also we have technical documentation to function our system well and guidance here you can see more in details we made in groups we have some standards uh, the main standard, of course, is sustainable forest management, general provisions, group forest management requirements, chain of custody we have adopted, and also procedure for development, approval, revision of the forest management standard, a regulation for the working group. The second block is certification and accreditation. Also here is adopted standard for chain of custody, but for certification uh, bodies who are working against forest management standard we had developed the standard and also regulation for the center of preparation of experts auditors system description you can find in the following documents regulation for national warranty forest certification system about our group who development all the standards um, and uh, also, the important document is stakeholder engagement of National Voluntary Forest Certification System. And one of the also very important is according to PFSC International Standard, we have to have administration. And here we have procedures uh, for issuance of PFSC logo, for notification, for managing complaints and appeals, and list of stakeholders to be sure that we uh, annually review and uh, know who are, is our stakeholders. So it's uh, all from my side, and uh, I would be happy to answer all your questions. I'm not sure whether you can hear me. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, but before my, my microphone was not working anymore. So if you have a question, otherwise uh, I would like also to have some overview of what are more or less the, the forest management standard, what has inside this standard. I think that probably most of the participants would like to know this, I guess. But so, um, yeah.
so uh, about the structure of the standard, we had um, the structure of the standard we made according PFSC as 1002, according sustainable forest management standard requirements. So we have eight indicators and we also uh, made, um, sorry, I will open then to, to speak more relevant. Maybe you have some special questions. What is inside the standard, uh, except of the standard requirements or? No, just generally. Then if someone generally, has a more specific question, please. Uh -huh. Generally, it is uh, according uh, PFSC standard indicators for sustainable forest management. And one minute I will open and tell you which, uh, which indicators we have there. So we have uh, the main indicators, it's maintenance or appro appropriate enhancement of forest resources and their contribution to the global carbon cycle. Also, we have criterion two: maintenance of forest ecosystem health and vitality. Criterion three, it's maintenance and encourage of productive functions of forests. Criterion four, it maintains conservation and appropriate enhancement of biological diversity in forest ecosystems. Criterion five, it maintains of appropriate enhancement of protective functions in forest management. Uh, it here is mainly soil and water. And criterion six, it maintains or appropriate enhancement of social economic functions and conditions. So it's the main criterion which we have and which we wrote indicators for this, how it should be organized to make the forest management sustainable. Thank you. If someone else has questions, please. Uh, yes, I do have a question. Um, a bit on the on the focus uh, focus on this of the of the certification is it more oriented towards uh, small forest um, forest owners communal forest owners or is it also including the big forest uh, forest companies uh, what do you expect and what was the uh, and what type of forest pro, uh, forest uh, owners enterprises were part of the pilot testing Sorry, uh, what forest enterprises was uh, the last part of the pilot testing? You had the pilot okay. testing phase. Yeah, yeah, I understood. It's a very okay. good question because uh, Ukraine, we are post-Soviet country, and uh, here we have almost seventy-five percent of forests are managed by government, and it's only one uh, state forest agency who manage all these forests. Also, we have some forests, it's around 13%, who are managed by communities. And uh, we have a very, very small uh, private, I think less than 1-2%, it's, it's a very, very small um, percentage of this. But we are focusing um, on the forest enterprises, not on some special group. We are focusing on all forests, and that's why we made a pilot testing. We made uh, one uh, pilot test. Uh, I will show you in your, maybe it will be easier to see on the map if you can see. So we had uh, two two of pilot testing was by state enterprises, state forest enterprises. It uh, one was on the west of the Ukraine in Ukrainian Carpathian, so in uh, in mountains region, and one was uh, in Ternopil region. It's more on north uh, of uh, Ukraine, so it's another type of ecosystem. 
and the third one was made in communal forestry. So in Ukraine, when we see the statistics of the, F, for example, FSC certified forests, the most of forests are certified it's stage enterprises. But we are also made the standard possible for communal forests. So I think um, it is our main advantage would be to that we can uh, that we made the standard possible also for small uh, forest owners because we made a special standard group forest management uh, there the uh, small uh, forest enterprises can um, be connected and make one uh, certificate to manage forest su sustainably Okay, thank you. Very clear. I, I would have another. Uh, I would have another question. So, Michael from HS Timber Group, basically. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so. Um, you know, the, the, it's probably the wrong place to, to raise this question because we are discussing about the forest management standard. But uh, as you probably know, there are, let's say, ongoing debates about the issue of legality of harvesting in Ukraine, uh, the, the, which is uh, of significant importance to all, um, to all organizations, to all companies which are importing Ukrainian wood into the European market because uh, European companies are subject to the European timber regulation and need to uh, guarantee guarantee legality uh, in a way that they uh, that you have to mitigate any risk of illegal harvesting or illegal timber trade uh, along your supply chain, right? And um, I was wondering, is there any is there, are there any considerations also in this respect because um, we see now the discussions with the FSC, FSC has massive problems, uh, especially or is currently uh, blamed by some NGOs that it cannot guarantee legality in Ukraine. And I was wondering which considerations do you have in this respect now when you set up the, the Ukrainian uh, PFC system? Because uh, I think this would be really a good chance also for the PFC Ukraine to make a difference. Thank you. It's very uh, painful question uh, and it's very good question because it is why we are here today. As uh, to be open, everybody knows that Ukraine unfortunately have not very good reputation at the moment. And uh, certification in Ukraine became not very nice word certification in Ukraine. And that's why we would like uh, to make a difference how we can make the difference. Everybody knows that it's nice to write a standard, that everybody can write the standards, write the rules. Also, we have a very nice law in Ukraine, and it's very strictly a law about the foresters. But the other thing is to maintain and to uh, to, to processing according these rules, these standards, this law. And uh, what we can do and how we can uh, make the difference. I think the main thing is to work with stakeholders. Because uh, what we now feel, because we are making uh, some publication in our uh, Facebook page, that uh, the reputation of forest workers are very bad in Ukraine. So everybody thinking that it is some bribes or something like this. But people, community who, who lives in this village, everybody knows when the harvesting, when everybody knows when the logging. And if community will work together with forest workers, uh, will um, educate, uh, forest workers will educate the community to check the standards uh, maintenance of the forest enterprise. And we as PFSC have to listen both of sides. We have to work with communities uh, 
in forests and we also have to work with forest workers to feel what they need and uh, how we uh, build together nice relationship. So uh, our main idea is to work with communities with communities in the forest, with local communities, and uh, to check with them if uh, forest enterprises are uh, doing uh, sustainable forest management according our standards, according international norms, according legal norms or not. Do you think that uh, that um, I'm sorry? Can you hear me? Yeah. Do you think that do you think that basically traceability solutions in this respect would also make uh, make make sense? Because uh, can you hear me? Yes. Not somebody is speaking. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm in the office basically. So um, I was wondering. Do you think that traceability solutions, as you have it already in place, would not make also a difference here in this respect? Because I think if uh, we as a company would have the proof of the legality by a clear traceability system, I think this would be a very strong argument that it could be included into the standard, at least let's say as an I don't know, in, as an addendum to the to the chain of custody standard, specifically for for Ukraine, probably. I don't know whether this is an option, and in combination with a with a clearer stakeholder communication with the, with working with the communities, probably uh, you could actively show how risks uh, of uh, illegal logging or illegal timber transport could be mitigated. Right. Um, I'm I'm telling this in our experience. We are very much like relying also on this Ukrainian tracing system, which is in place there, and we are also using it in order to check it and also to do the audits. Uh, but uh, the most significant risk mitigation measures currently for us for Ukraine is is uh, on-site audits, right? And if like uh, UFC could provide you some assistance in this regard, I think this would be great. A, um, uh, just to a little bit explanation. What do you mean with traceability? Traceability is when the wood processing company is buying the wood with documents, with a stamp from uh, enterprise that it was uh, harvested legally. It is existing in Ukraine. It's it's uh, actually it's not. Uh, I think it's not a problem because uh, now we uh, everybody has the documents, has the stamps, has the certification. The other thing, when actually people harvesting, uh, for example, this um, sanitary uh, harvesting, uh, harvesting when uh, uh, when they have all the documents. For the forest, but they st that, that this forest uh, uh, is ill, but they harvesting this forest, and uh, then the company, as a wood processor, we will receive uh, the documents. So, okay, so chain of custody, there is no uh, some um, restrictions of this uh, standard. The problem is from the ready beginning, from the harvesting. So in Ukraine, we don't have a problem with documents. We have a problem with harvesting according to sustainable forest management. So I think this is a problem. That's why I thought that we will work with community. Of course, we will use all these uh, traceability things. We wrote all these traceability things in our standards. We have the um, um, requirements for the forest enterprise when they preparing the wood for for sale they have to prepare all the documents and then the company who is buying will have everything according to the traceability okay thank you Hello, this is Bye Heidenhauser speaking. Um, I have a question regarding the group certification standard. In this standard, mm -hmm. you you determine and uh, have criteria for uh, the participating uh, risk level. My question is: uh, Do you 
encourage or do you even uh, require the use of, of the electronic register system along the supply chain and at all stages of manufacture? Because currently in the set, in the appendix B, it is shown that you do not require the full coverage with the electronic timber counting system. Or am I wrong about this? Okay. Um, about this electronic um, electronic uh, data base, we um, as I already told, so uh, the most of our forests are state owned. And also we have a forest codex of Ukraine and we have a laws who uh, coordinate the um, forest, uh, forest dry function in Ukraine. And now in Ukraine we have this electronic database. Last year we had uh, implement this and uh, this is a trial year, but uh, group forest management as a standard, as our standard, uh, did uh, is not required this but our group forest management standard is required to do everything according to the law, applicable law of ukraine so automatically our standard is requiring electronic database and uh, may, may i ask the second questions right in this direction are you is this checked by an audit or do you just expect it to be followed, the laws to be followed or are you actively checking this? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Are you in an audit, are you actively checking if all uh, information, if all data and all timber is covered by the electronic timber reg registration as it is required by the law as far as I understand? Are you actively checking this in an audit or do you just expect it to be followed? Just to, to make the situation clear, we as the association cannot make audits. We, we just, um, as the PFC certification is the third uh, uh, certification. So the certification body uh, will do audit. When we make a pilot audit uh, for the standards, it was free pilot audit. And we have, uh, I was there, and we uh, have checked, uh, as, as I told, this year was is trial year for this electronic database, but we uh, have checked what was possible. And of course, we will strictly check uh, everything because we will have uh, training for auditors soon when the, our system would be endorsed. And they, they have to, uh, to have accreditation and to have notification to do the PFC audit. Of course, they have to strictly check. And even in the report, uh, some of the certification body uh, publish uh, the links, then you can check after them from, uh, from webcam, how it was, what it was checked. And uh, it's, it's very, very clear system. Thank you very much. Thank you too for the question. Are there other questions? If not, so thank you everybody for participating to this webinar. Thank you, Maria, for presenting the Ukrainian system. I remind everyone that you can comment still on the consultation tool on the Ukrainian system. And thank you for being here. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for participating.